guys and gals, never here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something about on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Moon Touched. Y'all really, 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 really like this series. So let's go ahead and jump right back in, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright. <clears throat> How's the two of you been the talk of the camp for the past few moons at least? The renegade wolf and his graced pup. <clears throat> You're gonna be fighting off the hounds in there. All clawing at the chance to be the one to seed you. Keep talking and I'll turn back. My face grows warm in a flash. Hey, so you know I'm curious. Hmm? What? The bastard knows what, but I'll be forced to say it. What was it like? The, the ritual, I mean. You'll have to be a bit more specific there, lad. There are many rituals that take place during the joyous Moonfall celebrations. Final ritual? The bestowal, you ass? What was it like? Oh, getting fucked by a moon touch, do you mean? An embarrassing sigh is really all I have to give. Hmm. Heard like all hell at first. You go through some training to get you familiar with the sensations, but honestly, that training was good for shit all. It's more than you could prepare for. Hell, I thought all the times you and I played around would have done some good for me, but alas, oh. Huh. Hmm. I see. Perhaps my tone isn't as compliant with the jovial nature of his answer as I intended it to be, and he seems to take note of it as well. I got a firm pat on my back. Waiting enough to push me forward a bit, but I can tell he pulled his strength. Oh, don't worry, brother. He'll be do. He'll do just fine. The pain fades fast. There are so many things happening in that moment: sensations of the body, emotions of the heart, racing thoughts of the mind. He tilts his head upwards, and his eyes dance around, catching reflections of the shrouded sky above us. Then all that fades in a warmth that's so tender. So he pauses, clearly experiencing his memory again. Fresh in the moment. Ah, it's too much for words. You'll see it soon enough. With that, he pushes himself forward and off the log, taking a few steps to slow his momentum. The tall grass wrapping around his large paws. You do well, though, Soren. A bit. You do look well, though, Soren. A bit sexy, even. The beard looks nice on you. His eyes roam solely over my body, not even trying to hide his appraisal. Gods! I grunt and leap off the log as well, coming to a stand in front of the wolf. His stature looms over mine, and I'm suddenly lost in a moment of realization that this really is Kirik. Memories of our passion flicker through my mind like candlelight as I stare up at him, his skin pressed against mine, his green eyes half-closed, our bodies thrusting against each other. Well, shall we get back? I'm keen to get into the rend. Yeah, we can head out. Just one more thing. Would you transform for me? What? Here? Now? Suddenly, he seems a bit shy. I've never seen it done. A gnome doesn't shift, and I've heard it's beautiful. What might my first sight of it to be you? I catch a glimpse of myself in his eyes as he stares down at me, my eagerness in full display. <laughs> um, okay, okay. You just want to see my cock, don't you? I've seen every inch of you and haven't had a number of them inside me, too. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> He's his turn to fluster. All right, give me a moment. I haven't gone back in five or six moons, maybe. I watch as he fiddles with the straps around his chest, undoing each one and letting it fall to the flowers and grasses beneath him. His belt falls away next, each layer slowly being peeled away to rest on the grass around his lower paws. This dude's about to get naked. Like, I got some editing to do. His belt falls away next, each layer slowly being peeled away to rest on the grass around his lower paws. At last, he unfastens the tan cloth covering his cock and tosses it to me. It carries a strong, earthy musk as it lands in my hands. It's almost intoxicating. I dare not linger on it and throw it to the rest of his pile with a laugh. Oh, my. I can't help but seal a few quick looks at his sheath. My heart quickens as if I'm seeing him naked for the first time again. And I suppose I am. All right, you ready? As you are. The wolf takes a few steps out from the fluttering shadows of the trees above us. A sense of calm seems to take him as he as he closes his eyes and his chest expands with a deep breath. Huh. He releases the air at their parted lips and bends to a kneel, placing his hands on the earth beneath him, radiant blades of grass lapping his wrists and feet. It happens slowly at first. His fur begins to undulate as if being lifted off the gravity of his body. Strands of his fur wrap and twist together into vines of life, spreading away from him in a vortex, 
Threads of green light weave and bra weave and braid into the chain to the tangle. A kind of dust gently falls from them and waves like smoke from quiet embers. As the dust comes to settle on the ground, grass gives away to budding sprouts, practically glowing with life. Wildflowers of orange and yellow scatter about the earth wherever the dust touches down as glints of delicate light bounce off of them. Huh. Then from within the ephemeral tangle of vines and life, I see his skin, slowly revealed as if the wolf had been draped atop him. Fur gives way to a wildfire of familiar orange hair, and in a matter of moments his torso rests bare in the sun. I watch the vines open away from him as the momentum ripples down his arms and legs. Around him, wildflowers grow in bloom in a pool of color. He pushes off the ground. A proud smile sits on his face, the last few remaining tendrils evaporating into the breeze. Before me stands Kirik as I remember him. A man, naked in the warmth of the waning sun. Well, there you have it. It's panting, his chest rising and falling rapidly. My heart swells at both the beauty of what I just saw and also at seeing his face again after all these years. Second, y'all, water time. Alright guys and gals, and we are back. Let's jump back into it, shall we? I got a lot of editing to do for this video. My heart swells about the beauty of what I just saw and also at seeing his face again after all these years. Soren, you alright there? I realize I'm just standing there staring at him. I catch myself with a laugh and walk towards him. That was truly beautiful, Kirik. The stories tried their best, but that was... Huh, I know. I was shocked for the first shocked the first time I saw it, too. I always imagined it to be much more explosive as a kid. But it's actually quite pretty, eh? Or at least it can be. I kneel down to the flowers at his feet. Pimpernels and bird's foot flower. Flowers of the spring and the bows. I know you did. <laughs> you used to throw crushed handfuls of these in my face when we played. Amazing seeing them here, coming from you. Hey, it's all magic and heh, wonder, in it? He kneels down beside me and flicks his fingers to the yellows and greens. Each moon touch has their own mantle, informed by memories and whatnot. Or at least I think that's what I was told. It's he's panting hard, his wet pale skin drawing and drawing the auburn hair on his chest into gatherings that flow down his body in streams. You okay there? It seems that took a lot out of you. Ah, well, it did. I tried to control it for you. Slow it down and be all pretty-like. He tries to... He rises to stand and stretches his arms above his head, his ribs pointing towards the sky. Normally it's a bit faster, more free, but harder to see all the bits and such. Heh. <laughs> well, thank you, Carrick. Really. I pull him into my chest. His sweaty skin presses against mine or my clothes part. He lets out a grunt of surprise, but it quickly turns into a purring chuckle. I've missed you, brother. It's good to see you. I wasn't sure if it would happen again. Eh? What's that supposed to mean? Of course we'd see each other again, especially if you be with you being moon-called and all. I hold him firmly, breathing in his familiar scent. An old friend, a new beginning, the sense of all things constantly ending. He reaches down and taps at my ass rhythmically, ending with a squeeze. Don't hold me too tight here, brother. I'm naked, after all. I, I feel him growing against my groin. It's tempting to stay, but I loosen my hold on him, giving him a playful glare and a shake of my head. Just then, we hear a familiar call. Kirik's eyebrows dart up. Well, looks like it's time. You go on ahead. I'll shift back and likely beat you there. All right, then. Maybe we can pick this up later, I. Pick it up later? We'll see. Let's see if you still have a place amidst all the hounds. Gods, he looks so stupid that look of determination and a half-hard cock. I love it. All right, all right, but I have something they don't have, see? I already know how to make you beg. You'd be surprised. I have longings that even you don't know about. He flashes his eyebrows playfully as we tease each other. So it's a race against the other hounds, then, I? <laughs> I told you I'm fast. Good luck to you, brother. I go to turn away, but hesitate, looking him in the eyes once again. It's really good to see you again. Ah, you too, Soren. I finally let go of him, turning onto the path back towards the rendezvous site. Good lord. <laughs> well, that's a lot of that's a lot of uh, a lot of uh, nudity in this. It's a short walk, but sure enough, when I get there, I see Carrick, a wolf once again, panting and gulping down his water skin. That bastard took another way back and very obviously sprinted. He offers me the most obnoxiously proud grin from across the camp as his tail lashes out, lashes about behind him. An ohm stands with his gear secured to him, arms stretched out, with my pack hanging from paw. Mm, you set to go there, pup? 
I shoulder it as we fall in line behind a trickling trail of silver bows already making way onto the old trade road. I am. Have a good talk with Aunt Mia. He grunts through, he grunts through an affirmative nod. She brought me up to pace. Emerald Bow is already in the rent and we're the last to gather here. We're set to descend. Did you get the full story of the fiends? Carrick told me a little more. Sounds ominous, I. I did. Though we'll have time more time to talk about that later. Amaya will need to present what she and her people witnessed to the Conclave. Perhaps as a change in the ties that the larger people will have felt as well. Interesting times we're in. Interesting indeed. I'm just grateful that you and I have invaded, and invaded an encounter like that. The two of us alone would have had, wouldn't have had much of a chance. Well, that makes both of us. Kirk's face when he told me the story was haunting. Gods, I really should have gone with you to the stream. You were left unconscious and alone. That was foolish of us. Of me. If anything had happened to you. Hey, we, w we couldn't have known. Thank you for letting me go alone, you know? Maybe it was foolish, but you trusted me. And that means a lot. I'd sooner throw that trust to the flame than, lose, than to lose you. Regardless, you'll be safe to roam free and alone in the Canthros. It's safe there. His furrowed brown still tell, still tell, tell me more than his current tone. He's afraid. So, how far until we reach the main camp? A gnome clearly appreciates the change in topic, falling for my tried and true trick to stem his nerves, asking him a question. We need only climb another half an hour or so to reach the barrier. From there, it takes maybe two hours or so to reach Alone Sai, the main encampment. It'll go fast. Are you excited? A rhetorical question. He knows I've been dreaming about this day for most of my life. Beyond what I thought I could be. I'm a little nervous as well. I feel like I'm walking out into an unknown forest at night, breaking every twig and shouting into the darkness. I don't know what's coming next. Something horrible? Something divine? A gnome lets out a short laugh. That's understandable. I can say the same. Soon enough, we'll know that the, what the Rend has for the both of us. He offers an assuring pat on my back and turns to the flow of the party, moving in synchronization as we ascend to the brim of the Cantharos, like a gentle murmuration. Take a note. Water time. We walk in silence for a while, enjoying the ambient chatter of the silver bows as we hike together. For the past two weeks, it's been just a gnome and I, and while the silence is something we both we both feel at home in, I can tell we're equally enjoying the liveliness of our new company. Soon we'll be lost in a sea of people, gathered from all corners of the moon-blessed lands. Moved by reverence for and devotion to the weeping wolf, they offer their all to his design. Body, mind, soul, and most of all, purpose. I rest my hand against the chill of my scar, my thoughts drifting back to what happened just a few hours ago, the creeping despair and fear. I can do this. I will become moon-touched. That's what I want more than anything. To make something of my life. To offer that back to the weeping wolf. And to become an instrument for a design beyond my own. A swirling maelstrom of awe, trepidation, mystery, and wonder flood my heart and mind. My eyes stare vacantly at the ground as I climb the slope, onto the very precipice of the expanding unknown. It's time, and with heart pounding I'll step into it. To be consumed. Or to be transformed. Soren, look! Oh shit. Oh shit, that's holy fuck, that's beautiful. Wow. Yeah, this game never ceases to amaze me with its fucking art quality. Oh, is that the end of the fucking demo? Oh, you better not. Oh, you son of a bitch, you better not. I swear to God. I swear to God. If you do it. If you God damn it! <laughs> ah! This game is so good! Why would you do this to me? <laughs> ah! <laughs> uh, thank you for playing the demo. Got one last treat for you, but first... The project is made possible through the support of my patrons. Thank you all greatly. I can't say that loud enough. You've made this project a reality. If you'd like to support the project, please check out here and become part of the pack. Unlocked character profiles. Make a save here if you'd like to come back later. Okay. Hmm. Is it gonna be... Okay, no nudity. Okay. Ooh, that's cool, though. Um, I think I'll save that for the main game. Uh, what else? We... Ooh. Tribute to the veal. Oh. Hmm. I like that. Who's this dude? Tribute of Flames. Nokai. 
Oh, wow. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's super daddy. Jesus. Ah, uh, there's a boy. Friend and lover. Kirik. And who is the fifth one? Tribute of Tides. Raithen. Alright, y'all, that is the current end of the Moon Touch demo. Um, I, if the creator is watching this, I would very, very much like access to the full game if uh, if you can uh, if you can make that happen. I would really, really appreciate that, and I'm sure my uh, my lovely audience would as well. So thank you all so much for watching. This is Moon Touch. Go download, download the demo and give it a shot. I really, really enjoyed this. And based on the metrics generated from all of the videos I've done on this, y'all have greatly enjoyed it as well. <laughs> but yeah, thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for you for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silver. And thank you but above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks to our two gold tier patrons, Zeke and Toby. Y'all are awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to Ultimate Tier anyway. If y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for more contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye